Previously on The Mole, The Next Betrayal. No, I swear to God, I'm not the mole. You could be a very sadistic mole. I swear on my ring. <laughs> I needed Heather to convince me that she wasn't the mole. All right, who do you want to knock out first? Have you spotted her? Yeah, you want to move? Go! I'm on the move now. Out there, right! You see her? I got her. Hey. All right. I'm tired of this game. I feel terrible. I said, boy, she's on the verge of cracking. Ribs. A group of strangers working together to earn up to $1 million. That in the end, only one of them will win. One of these players is the Mole, a double agent we hired working for us against the other 13. At the end of each episode, the players take the quiz. Ten questions about the mole. The quiz determines who stays and who goes because the player who scores the lowest on the quiz is executed and is sent home immediately. Up to $1 million hinges on discovering who is the mole. Watch for the hidden clue to the identity of the mole. The name of the game is getting to the final three and then winning. If I can do that by squeezing out exemptions, I will do that. If I do make it past this round, I'm scared to death that Dorothy will beat me. And then I'll just be like, why? I'll think, why in the world did I form a collision with her? Because everything that's happened so far, I could have done on my own. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm still here. I've been lucky in life when it's come to my family. You know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I've never been really lucky. Maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one that I've been waiting my whole life for. With only four remaining in the game, the players are given the opportunity to openly interview each other. Bill and Al head off one way, while Dorothy and Heather the other. So how does it feel to be one of the four remaining players? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it feels wonderful to be one of the last four peeps. Uh, quite a surprise, I have to say. So Heather, would you say you're a good liar? Am I a good liar? Mm -hmm. I think I'm an excellent liar. Really, how come? Um, I've gotten away with a lot of deceitful things in my life. So are you the mole? No, of course I'm not the mole. How are you gonna go into this next exam? What's gonna be your strategy? <laughs> I prefer not to answer that question. <laughs> I'll ask you the same question. How are you going to do it? I'm going to throw it all out there on one person. Are you really? Bill asked me what I was going to do. I said I was going to lay it all out there on one player. And Heather asked me what I was going to do, and I said I was going to split it up. You know, never show you, never show your hand. Hello, Anderson. Welcome. Just to let you guys know, obviously, we are in the second to last round of the game. So uh, things will get harder and harder from here on out. There will be one exemption offered in this round of the game. This will be the last exemption of the game. At this point, with the numbers of, of players so small, an exemption is very important. I would drink an entire bottle of my foot wine for an exemption right now. <laughs> That's how bad I would like to have one. And the game will just get harder from here. So I want to wish you all a lot of luck. But the players will need a lot more than luck over the next 24 hours, because the game is about to take a strange and unexpected twist. Hi, guys. Special delivery Hello. from the mole. Ah. Old mole and new mole. <laughs> when Catherine, last year's mole, showed up, was a major surprise to us. You guys want to see what it is? Can I open it? Yeah, it's a preview of the treats to come. Oh, oh danger. I'm nervous. Oh. Ah! What? Friggin' maggots in there, man. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're gonna have to eat bugs or something. No, for an exemption. No, we won't. Well, I'm gonna leave that with you guys, and I just wanna wish you good luck. Um, there are four of you left now, and soon there will only be three. A winner, a loser, and the mole. So good luck. Once a mole, always. Thanks. A mole. Thanks for Thank the delivery. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. That was a that was Guys, you can't just great. leave it there for the restaurant. That's really I, weird. I give a rat's ass where it goes. It's not coming with me. What are you digging in there for? I'm seeing if there's anything in the bottom. Yeah, another low. If there's any clue or anything like that. 
I'm so appalled about what might happen next. Nah, no clues. Ew, there's one wiggling its little head. Ew. Okay, the lunch is over. Al was very vocal in saying, I am not eating any bugs. He said, I don't care what I do. I'm not going to eat any bugs. I didn't come here to eat bugs. And actually, that sort of turned into, you know, would you eat a bug for $100,000? Hell no, I wouldn't eat a bug for $100,000. Oh, I gosh, day, I've eaten quite a few bugs. I, I probably eat one of those for $100,000. Welcome to Anderson's Fun House. I hope you have as much fun here as I do. My mother built this house for me when I was very small. Do you like my dolls? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. The dolls frightened me because I assumed that the dolls would be involved somehow in some sort of weird game we had to play. Tonight we have a game for you here in Anderson's Fun House. The game is high card, at stake $100,000. And your sleeping arrangements for the night. The last person standing after the game ends gets to go back to the hotel and have a pleasant night's sleep. The rest of you, well, we have other accommodations for you here in Anderson's Fun House. Don't we, girls? Yeah. Stop looking at me like that, you harlot! <laughs> Sorry. Frightened. <laughs> I digress. I've been under a lot of stress lately, I'm sorry. Here's how the game works. Each of you will have a chip for $25,000. I'll deal you each a card. The player with the highest card wins that hand. Aces are high in this game. Now, if you win a hand, you have two choices. You can either add your chip into the pot or kick out another player from the game. Once you are kicked out of the game, you have to go sit with my girls. And they like to watch, so they get the front row seat. You have to sit in back of them. I'm not looking forward to spending the night in Anderson's Fun House because I suspect something else is going to happen. So it would be stupid to kick people out until we get all our chips in there, if everybody else agrees. I'm going to give you each a chip for 25000 Okay. Don't turn it over until I say so. Okay. Turn over the cards. Heather, you have the high card. You choose to put your money in the pot. Now you can cut the deck this time. Okay, turn over your cards. Al had the high card, chose to put his money in. I'll ask you now one by one to turn over your cards, Bill, to start. Heather? Bill, you had the high card? Okay, there's now $75,000 in the pot. Okay, Bill, I'll ask you to please turn your card over first. Heather? Dorothy? The choice is yours. You're kidding me. Oh, God. Um. I don't even stand hesitation. Nobody hesitated but you. What, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Where are your money in? <laughs> well, $100,000 is in the pot. Now it's a question of who remains at the table. Al, you have the high card. Okay, Dorothy, please go sit with my girls. Who has a tape is lost? <laughs> Bill, <laughs> turn your card up. Al, Heather. Big card. Heather, you have the high card. One of you will win after this hand. You get to go home, back to the hotel. 
the other will join the others. Spending the night here in Anderson's fun house. With your girls. Oh, yes. Bill, please turn over your card. I like that card. It's like I'm out. Heather, let's see. Bill has won the high card game. And while he returns to the hotel for a restful night's sleep, the others are about to find out their fate. I will now take you to your rooms. Let me take Dorothy first, the rest of you stay here. Dorothy, come with me. This will be some creepy ass room. Yeah, this is not gonna be fun. Coming up on The Mole, the next betrayal. Take Dorothy first, the rest of you stay here. Dorothy, come with me. Dorothy, Al, and Heather must now spend the night in the fun house. I take Dorothy to her sleeping quarters first. Vanilla chocolate. Chocolate. Hot or cold? Hot. Dry or wet? Dry. Are you all? No. That's <laughs> not gonna work. I was just trying to feel her out, see if I can get anything new out of her in light of the circumstances, you know, all alone, late at night, weary people. I was trying to use those things to my advantage to see if I can drum up any new information, but I didn't really get a whole lot. You'll just come right back here. You would just sit on the stool. You're a sadistic. I think this is some kind of torture device, <laughs> somewhat like what people do to criminals in an interrogation. It's a small room, really, really bright lights that you can't see anything outside. The group managed to put $100,000 in the pot, but that money is still at risk. It all depends on what you choose to do right now. You have to spend 30 minutes inside this box in order to guarantee that the group will get $100,000. The other two players have to spend time in the rooms that they have been assigned to as well. If at any time in the 30 minutes you choose to leave this box, you may do so, but you will sacrifice $100,000. Your 30 minutes will begin as soon as I leave this room. All right, good luck. I have a very special room for you in my fun house. This is your room. You have to sleep here tonight? This is your bed. You sleep on the bed. That's it. That's it. I have to be on the bed. You know, the, the bulk of your body, I would say. I mean, you know, this I mean, is I fine. If I wanted to, like, roll over on my side, that's okay. Sure, I mean, this, this constitutes being on the bed. You know, so would, right. I don't know, say this. You know. Why, why are you doing that? One? I don't know. <laughs> it's really up to you. But if, really for instance, this would not be on the bed, this would be off the bed. Yes. Do you understand? I, yeah. You have to stay in this room, on this bed, all night long. Okay. If you leave this room for any reason, you will be forfeiting $100,000. What's with the bubbles? Is that the fun of the fun bed? They're just tiny bubbles. It's not a big deal. That's it. That's it. That's bull. There's something going on. All right. Good luck. All right. right. Hundred thousand dollars at stake. Thank you. The money could be yours. Thank you. Sleep well. Oh, I'm certain I will. So please come in. This is your room. This is your roommate. <laughs> She's a python. A rather large one. Come in. Yes, please, please come in. I have to close the door or else she might get out. She's been very lonely and she's very happy to see you. $100,000 is in the pot, but that $100,000 is at risk. It all depends on what you and the other players choose to do now. For your part, you have to stay in this room until I come and let you out. This is just one of the many rooms in my house of fun. Oh, God. Enjoy the night. I 
do not like bugs. They're so gross. They definitely gross me out. The mole, the next betrayal. Al, Heather, and Dorothy must stay in their assigned rooms or they will sacrifice $100,000. I'm trying to concentrate on not throwing up and not thinking about the little cockroaches that are crawling everywhere and just trying to keep cool. I knew the most difficult part for me in this game was going to be not losing my cool in a small space. It stops and it starts again from the beginning. Why are you doing that? Oh, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Doing this, let me out of here. <laughs> There's no way. I'm not gonna do it. No way. There was a giant python in that room, and it was pitch black. Couldn't see anything. I could hear it moving around the floor. I'm deathly afraid of snakes. Anyway, the thought of even being in the room with it, with the light on, scares the hell out of me. There's no way I'm spending the night in a room where I can't even see my own hand. You know what? It, even if I win this game. $486,000 is just fine with me. So giving up $100,000? I'm giving up $100,000. And you're giving up that money not just for yourself, but the group? Yeah. I am. Unaware that Heather has just forfeited the $100,000, Al and Dorothy continue to work to complete their tasks. Hard. I hate small spaces, and those little things aren't going. To... Oh. You're sick. You didn't do it either. What? I did something. What'd you do? I had to sleep in this like little bitty room with a giant p python. It was totally pitch black. 
And I, they turned the lights off and it was like hissing and I, I'm so, you know, like, forget it. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Oh, luxurious quarters What'd compared to, to mine. Um, I was in a bug cage. A bug cage? <laughs> Approximately this high and this wide. And then, one by one, these little contraptions start opening up and showers of cockroaches about the size of my fist come pouring down. It was so gross. So nothing else happened? He said, okay, congratulations, you've finished? Mm -hmm. He didn't offer you any sort of deal. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. I hate this freaking game. Did you hear that tiny bubble song playing? That weird song? Playing over and over again. Maybe that's for Al. I feel bad whatever it is Al, Al's doing because clearly he's been there for a while. I thought for sure that Al wouldn't do whatever he had to do. He's pretty gung ho though. It was a disaster. It was, you know, speed up like the chipmunks and then really slow like Don Ho had done some drugs. And it was just unbelievable. With a feeling that I'm gonna love you, gonna love you. Till the end. Till the end of time. No, I didn't get a wink of sleep is what I didn't get. Is this what you guys had? What time is it? It's 8 o'clock. What is going on here, yeah, man? Dorothy, you want to explain? Is this where you guys spent the night? Why don't you tell us about your evening, Al? Oh, you want to hear about my evening? Let me tell you about my evening. Curious. I got to sleep on a metal bed. No mattress, just a metal spring. And a bubble machine pouring bubbles down onto me. And all I heard was... Tiny bubbles for five straight hours. That's I didn't so sleep bad. a week. No, 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 no. Al. Listen, I was taken into this little like cave area, and there's a giant like eight foot python. Oh wait a minute. So I'm just a little sudden, it gets worse. No, it so, can't get worse. So then all of a sudden, lights go out, pitch black, windows down, door shut. I can't see the damn thing. It's it's like hissing and moving all over the floor. I mean, talk about frightening. I mean, I couldn't do it. I'm so sorry that you had to do that, Al, but there's no way in hell, even for an exemption, that I would have done that. Oh, I can't believe 100,000 is gone. What I just went through was worth so much more than 100,000. I mean, we slept a little bit, but we, not really. I, I didn't sleep a freaking wink. I got about five minutes in. I am so tired that I'm shaking, man, because I'm so tired. So you don't have an exemption? No, I got nothing. Bill probably has an exemption. You know, I'd hate to think that he got an exemption by going to the hotel and having a good night's oh, sleep. Oh, I'd be pissed off. Hundred grand. Damn. Why well, couldn't have been like twenty-five grand each? Oh, and this it. seems pretty harsh. Tiny bubbles in the wine makes me happy. What are the rest of the words? Do you know? 
Oh, I know. I just don't care to repeat them. I heard them way too many times, man. Huh? You don't like Don Ho? No. No? I didn't like him fast. I didn't like him slow. I didn't like him backwards. <laughs> I didn't like him choppy. I didn't like him loud. I didn't like him soft. <laughs> you just didn't like him. I didn't like him any way we served up, man. None of you guys seem to have enjoyed my fun house. I know you've been wondering about the final exemption. Well, it will be part of this next game. As you know, the ability to lie and detect lies in others is essential for success. Today, you will have a chance to test your ability at lying. Bill will act as a human lie detector. One by one, you'll go into Bill, and you'll tell him what room you were in last night. Two of you will lie to Bill. One of you will tell the truth. If Bill is able to figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth, Bill earns the exemption, and no money is added to the pot. If, however, you are able to deceive Bill, and Bill cannot figure out who is lying and who's telling the truth, Bill will not earn the exemption, and you will add $50,000 to the pot. All right, you have five minutes to uh, determine your strategy. I so think wait, since you guys spent time and talked about your stories earlier, you guys just swap your okay. stories, and then just let me lay mine out there. Okay. For the game's sake, I don't want him to get it because I want the $50,000 to be added to the pot since we just lost $100,000 the night before. I definitely have a knack for lying. I can pull it off. Coming up on The Mole, The Next Betrayal. Bill is shown a video clip of each room. He has no idea which player was in which room or the outcome of the game. Now he must detect who is lying and who is telling the truth. If he's successful, he'll earn an exemption. If not, the group will win $50,000. This is the third room in my fun house. That's all you'll That's see. That's it? That's the mystery room. <laughs> Bill, your interrogation begins as soon as Heather sits down. Bill has five minutes to interview each player. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Bill. Are you lying to me or telling the truth? I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> what happened? What, how was your night? Okay, I was taken into this room, and there was a wire mesh cage with, like, little small squares. While I was sort of crouched down, there was a stool. I was pasted in the bottom of it. Basically, Anderson says, you just stay here for 30 minutes. And there was these really bright lights that were shining from the bottom of the cage. And then all of a sudden, this contraption opens and all these cockroaches start falling. I mean, they were really big, like as big as the fit of my fist, maybe. I saw a film of them, they were big. Yeah, I mean, I did it, but it was not pleasant at all. Any of the cockroaches get on you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the restaurant, when we saw the worms, you were across the room uh, in a yeah. split second. But you could stay in with the bugs and the... Yeah, I did it just because $100,000, you know. I mean, he said, if you do not do this, you will sacrifice the entire pot. If I had to eat the damn things, I probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah. My initial approach was try to forget any lies and simply try to figure out in my own mind who appeared to be telling the truth. Bill, you have five minutes. Hello, Bill. Right now, what happened to you? What did you do? You know the song Tiny Bubbles? I hate it. I heard it nine million <laughs> times last night. I heard it fast. It was Don Ho? It slow. You got the Don Ho version? I got fast, slow, backwards, forwards, really loud, really low, broken up, restarted. How, how long did you have to stay there? All night, until eight in the morning. And there was nothing else to it? Just had to listen to that crappy music, stay on the bed. Did you sleep any? I didn't sleep any. You didn't sleep any? I didn't sleep any. Al, you can sleep through my snoring. You can sleep through anything. Don Ho is tough, man. <laughs> Don Ho is tough. I didn't know who it was. I thought, actually, I thought it was uh, Dean Martin. I can tell I know, Tiny Bubbles. The fact that Al couldn't go to sleep last night listening to Don Ho sing Tiny Bubbles was one of the funniest things. I, the more I the, thought about that, the harder I've laughed. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning. Are you lying to me or telling the truth, Dorothy? I always tell the truth. <laughs> You lie. Okay, that's your first lie now. <laughs> Tell me what happened last night. Well, um, Anderson drew me into the snake room. And before my very eyes, I see this enormous boa constrictor. And I'm told, here are your sleeping quarters for the evening. You'll stay here. And I tried to get them to tell me how long I would be sleeping there. And they wouldn't tell me. Was it dark or light? Or? There was this black light. You couldn't really see you know, very much in the room. But if you're faced with a snake this big and the hissing <laughs> is not pleasant. Will the instructors hiss? 
and snakes don't move very fast, you didn't think you could just stay out of its way? Well, after the first like minute, they shut off the light. Oh, they shut off the black light. So mm -hmm. it's pitch dark? Yeah. I mean, that changes things significantly. I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll just avoid it. Some other questions to ask you. I don't have time. Interrogation is over. Dorothy, please stand up. I wasn't sure if I fooled Bill with my story simply because he seemed to ask a lot of questions. He definitely had some questions regarding uh, the snake and the way it was behaving. Have a seat. As you know, Bill, if you get this part of the game correct, you earn an exemption for yourself. You are guaranteed to make it into the final round. No money will be added to the pot. If, however, you guess it correctly, $50,000 will be added to the pot, and you will not have an exemption. So why don't we start off by uh, just hearing a little bit about what you thought of each person's story. Start with Larry Dyke. Well, Heather told me about sitting in the room with the cockroaches and the size of the room. I, I saw uh, five seconds or so the room. It looked bigger than you described. I do believe that if you were in there as tasteful and smelly as it might have been, that you could have lasted that 30 minutes. Al, Al who can sleep through anything. And I, I find it really hard to believe that one, you couldn't fall asleep there. And two, you didn't know that was Don Ho, then you didn't know all the words to that. Dorothy. Dorothy. Uh, the snake. A uh, boy constrictor. I never heard a boy constrictor hiss. So thinking all that through, I, I, I think Al, you and Dorothy probably switched places. And I think Heather, you probably stuck it out on the cockroach room. So who do you think is lying and who do you think is telling the truth? I think Al and Dorothy are lying and Heather's telling the truth. Why don't we start off with Dorothy? Dorothy? I lied. Al, did you lie or tell the truth? I told the truth. You're kidding. I hope to never hear tiny bubbles again, ever, <laughs> in my life, ever. Heather? I lied. You were correct about Dorothy. You were wrong about Al. Al was actually telling you the truth. So you failed to earn the exemption. There will be no exemptions offered in this round of play. I'm really happy that since I couldn't earn the exemption, that it's a level playing field. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If I was on the other side getting the exemption, I would be like, hey, hey, hey. Too bad for you guys. Because you guessed incorrectly, you did not earn the exemption. However, $50,000 will be added to the pot. So the pot now stands at $536,000. Well, I know you guys had a really rough night last night. I know you're missing home and missing good things America. Wow. So I have a special treat for you tonight. Oh, please. Oh, no. For dinner. Oh, yeah. No, it's good. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, my God. Look at those fries. <laughs> and, uh, have a seat? Oh, yeah. Great. Let's little do it. taste of America. That's good. Let's do it. This is so much better than pasta. Cat soup is coming. I'll take it. Definitely. Very cool. Royale cheese. Oh. McDonald's by Kimber White. I love it. Hmm. That's the price. Big ones. Mm. We just screwed things up mm -hmm. by nature. Does it seem real that the game is almost over? No. I said it today in my confession, I said the game is coming to an end, and that's good because my end is coming. <laughs> There's just always a, a guessing game going on. Yeah. You can never and run. last night really pushed me to the brink. When you get down that close, and you are two executions away from earning or winning the, the very large pot that we've uh, put together, if, if you're telling me you're still playing for fun, you're, you're full of it. Well, as you know, uh, we're very close to entering the final round. Three of you will make it to the final round. For one of you, this is your last supper. Compliment of <laughs> Mickey D's. So, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on The Mole, the next betrayal. It is time once again for the quiz. Ten questions about the identity of the mole. Question number one. During High Card, what room was the mole in? No way in the world is a girl that's shown as much guts as Heather going to run from a snake. That's just sort of the final blow for me. I'm not going to do it? No way. 
I was disappointed that Heather left her room early and lost the money. I think the mole would want to sabotage $100,000 out of the pot. Number two, what was the number of the journal the mole originally received? Dorothy could definitely be the mole. She's extremely intelligent, and she has done a good job of making herself suspicious. Number three, during high card, what was the sum total of all the cards the mole received? Face cards equal 10, ace equals 11. I'll trust Heather up until this next quiz. And then if we both survive, it's going to be each person for themselves. Number four, what was the mole during the liar game? Number five, who did the mole eliminate during the high card game? The mole has got to sabotage the game. Dorothy, in fact, if you, if you try to add up the points, if you just go the negative points, Dorothy actually comes out ahead. She's had more little screw ups, but she's also had more good saves and good wins. Number six. During the interrogation segment of the liar game, did the mole have their personal bag in the room with them? I think Bill suspects Heather primarily. I think Heather suspects Dorothy primarily. And Dorothy, I think, suspects Bill, to tell you the truth. I think that's the way it goes. And I'm kind of like on the outside looking in. Number seven, did the mole have ketchup with their fries at the execution dinner tonight? I've suspected Bill from the beginning. Everything he does is just very, you can trust him, is what he, that's how he appears, is that you can trust him. And that always made me suspicious. Number eight, how many times did the mole cut the deck during the high card game? Number nine, what kind of music does the mole like? I'm almost positive that I'm leaving tonight. That quiz was the hardest we've ever taken. And there's questions on there that I had no idea. I just guessed. Number 10, who is the mole? Tonight, you face your 11th execution as a group. I know you're all tired, both physically and emotionally. A lot of you have said you're anxious for the game to come to an end. For one of you, the game ends now. You've all just taken the 10-question quiz about the identity of the mole. The player who gets the most answers wrong on the quiz is the player who will be executed tonight. I'll begin entering your names into the computer. If a green screen appears after your name has been entered, you remain in the game. You make it to the final round. If, however, a red screen appears after your name has been entered, you are the game's 11th victim. You have to take your bag and leave the game immediately. The pot now stands at $536,000. Only one of you will get that money. Good luck. Heather. Al. What's going through your mind? Disappointed, not really disappointed. I thought I was gonna squeak by again. I definitely thought he had a strong chance of leaving. He's always so nervous and so unsure of himself and sometimes a little bit less confident than he should be. I am so floored. Coming out of that quiz, I was really nervous because I felt like I was taking it much slower than I ever have in the past, and I thought for sure 
I'd be walking out tonight. Oh, Al's a great guy. I mean, Al is, he is well-read, he's funny, he's articulate. Uh, he's got more superstitions than the average uh, army platoon. You have your daughter's good luck charms, though. Sure do. I stick out my dog and my family, so I don't, I don't lose that. <laughs> I got that. Foul play is afoot. In a game of deceit and, uh, and lies and backstabbing, to get as far as I did without having to do any of that stuff is a tremendous uh, achievement, I think so. <laughs> Works the best. You look fabulous. <laughs> my girls. That is the best thing. Nice. That makes me happy. That's my girls. This is an unbelievable view. If I die now, this is the last view I get. I love you, Robin. Now. <laughs> Run in there, look. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah, thanks. It really was great. It was. I see any Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great having Heather, are you the mole? I'm not the mole. Bill, are you the mole? No, I'm not the mole. Dorothy, are you the mole? No, I'm not the mole. May I check something? Ha <laughs> uh ha. <-huh. laughs> <laughs> what did you expect? Flames to burst out of my nose? <laughs> <laughs> Coming this fall. It's emotional, it's physical, it's insanity. The Amazing Race returns with enough detours, fast forwards, and roadblocks to make your head spin. You lose a clue. I didn't, you did. All new teams. Look at me, I would never ruin a glitter shirt. All new destinations. You don't do it like you're in New York. As infinite as the world. It twists you, it turns you, highs of highs, lowest of lows. The Amazing Race 3, coming this fall to CTV. Like a freak out. Don't drink, don't take drugs. No, no, no. Please. Do if you have sex with condom. The Osbournes this fall on CTV. Hey, that's how it goes. Brought to you by Labatt Blue. A whole lot can happen out of the blue.